In this tutorial we're going to look at applying fills to fonts and images. So this tutorial is very specific for rotary users, so I'm just going to change to rotary preview there. Alright, so with fonts, let's draw a few lines here. Okay, so I've got two lines of text here. This first line is a lie. Let's change that. It's better. And I'm a CFF. Let's change you to that. Alright, so just recapping back on a previous tutorial regarding fonts. Cypher Symmetry incorporates two different font formats. True type font format and a CFF Symmetry font format. Now, symmetry fonts come in a few different shapes and sizes. They can either be single line fonts, which are very useful if you're doing very, very small lettering, and then multi-line fonts like a three or a six line. Now, these fonts have been speed rated, so they perform very quickly and very accurately um, around your engraver, giving you a beautiful finish. Now, the true types, on the other hand, can be used for rotary and laser and when you typically import a true type font like we have here for rotary you'll see that you only just get the outline no no true type font will be a single line and no true type font will ever come in filled so if you want to fill a true type font you need to just click on the line of text you want to fill and go across here to our fill logo which is a, the letter A with a single line fill going through it. So if you just click on that, you'll see you've got a few different options here. The first is cutter width. So if we enter say a 0.2 mil cutter for instance, that should fill it quite nicely. And then you've got your selection of fills down here. Now in this case we only have the island fill to play with. And you've got two options with the island fill. You can optionally keep the source outline and you can also join the paths. Now keeping the source outline doesn't really um, apply too much to actual text so we'll come back to keep source outline in a moment. It's more useful with images. Now join paths, it depends on what sort of style you're going for. Um, actually if you look at this preview of the button here, this is a classic example of an island fill with the join paths turned off. Because you can see here there's just three boxes. Now with join paths turned on, what you'd expect is you'd have box number one, then a line going out to here connecting box number two, and then another line going out to here to connect box number three. So that's really what join paths means. Now aesthetically a particular job may look nicer with join paths turned off, especially if there is a substantial gap between the lines, which the cutter doesn't actually fill. So it would make a nice text effects that way. But if you have join paths turned on and your cutter is correctly set, so you've got a little bit of overlap, join paths will simply allow the engraver to go through the job a lot quicker because it doesn't need to actually lift the Z each time it creates a new contour. Just draws a little line and starts the next one. So we'll keep join paths turned on for now just so I can illustrate that to you. And click on the fill we want. Now you can see the difference there. Now the Cypher font for instance, although this is six line Helvetica, those lines will not shift. So it's up to you when you're doing the six line Helvetica to make sure that you've got the correct tool tip to correctly engrave this font, especially if you want to completely remove all of the material in the lettering. I suppose that's one example, one benefit really of using true type fonts is that you've got complete control here. You don't need to change your color, you just change the color width in there to match the color which you're planning on using. So let's now just zoom in and take a closer look. And you can see what I mean here by join paths. See that little line? That little line which goes all the way out because it's done the inside on first and next, next, and it's gone outwards. And you can see over here too. So if all your little individual contours are all connected up. And that's the island fill. So very fast and 
very nicely done, Dell, Dell engraved beautifully. So what we'll do at the moment, we'll just remove those two lines and move on to images. So let's select an image. Go to our bitmaps folder. So our collection of images. Go for Nubus. We'll drop him in. So again, just like true type fonts, images, bitmaps or JPEGs, which you import, will automatically be vectorized on the fly, uh, but they will not be filled. So what you'll end up with is just outline cut. So again, if you wanted to fill this, simply click on the image, click on the A, and you've got the exact same options here. Now, what I'll do is afterwards, I'll show you another example for keep source outline, because this one here I don't think will notice much difference. So I'll bring the cutter down to 2. This time we won't join the paths, just so you can see, and we'll click on OK. So now if we zoom in to say that portion there, you can see here there are no little lines connecting them because we just simply haven't joined up the paths. And you can see once again that was also a very nice quick fill. So we'll delete that line. Choose a better image. Um, usually images which have some text would be a really good example. Um, okay, this one might be good. It's an example which we did for a previous trade show in Sydney. So this will have a combination of images and text all built into it. Okay, this is good. So what we've got here, we've got a very large shape, which is sales of the Opera House, and some text. And you can see here the text here is very small, not much space to get a cutter in there at all. So click on it. We go to fill, and we go, okay, well this time we only want a 0 0.3 cutter. We're going to join the paths. Have a look. There's the job. There's the text. If we click on fill, that's what we get. So the sales have come up beautifully. The four little dots up here have come up beautifully. The text down here is good. You can see just between the in the zeros especially, you can see that it's gone okay. Well, we can fill that little bit, that little bit. Technically, there should be enough overlap here that the rest of this fills nicely, so that's all good. Oh, oh, what's happened up here? Especially around image and expo, there's no way that after engraving that you'll be able to tell that that's image expo. So if we go back to our fill, and this time say keep source outline, what that will do, they will apply the fill, but also make sure that the initial outline which is on the graphic actually remains in play too. Now if you are using a really big cutter, um, this effect might not turn out that well, but at least you will have the actual text in place. And that is basically the secret behind TrueType and image filling.